The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, traders. It's just past 4.30 on Wall Street, and we are all in for a treat. Before we ask started, we asked you all a poll question. I hope many of you had a chance to answer, and that was, which of the following stocks has gained the most in 2013? So a little bit of trivia to get us started with this event. And the correct answer was Tesla. 44% of you um, selected Tesla. You know, the other options, Zale, Netflix, and Best Buy, have all done quite, quite you know, well in 2013, but none as well as Tesla. Anywho, we are very fortunate to have here with us Mr. Eric Mouadze, who will present this session, Learn One Reason to Love Overbought Stocks, ETFs, and Markets. My name is Nathan. I'm on the team here at MarketFi.com. MarketFi.com is, of course, the web's only store where you can shop and compare the market's best trading newsletters and education. So when it comes to the market's best trading newsletters, that is a great segue to our presenter, Eric Mouadze. He needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyways. Eric is... A, an immigrant from Kenya, he came to the United States to pursue his dream, and that dream was trading. And boy, did he achieve that dream. As a prominent trader and a South African consultant to trading firms and hedge funds, Eric is a luminary in trading circles. He's famous for his advocacy for trading momentum stocks. And ultimately, what I love about Eric is that he's an everyman trader. He's brilliant. The man has a master's degree in chemistry, but he doesn't have a fancy finance PhD. He doesn't have these fancy financial businesses sometimes. What he does have is a killer instinct and a track record of thinking differently about the market. So what's really inspiring about Eric is that he started the way that so many of us are, are just starting, and that is just with hard work and with learning about the market on his own. And that's an amazing thing because he's an inspiration to me, and I'm sure by the end of the session he'll be an inspiration to you as well. He simply learned to trade, developed an amazing trading strategy, and rose to the top of the game because he really is now considered one of the best in the business. Because of this humble, hard-working background, I've seen an unmatched passion in him to go out there and to help other traders make it big, just like he has. And that's one why we're excited to have Eric as a maven on Market Buy. He runs the Educational Trader Newsletter, and in that newsletter, he issues, he issues trade alerts and daily videos with his insights to members of the Educational Trader community on Market Buy. It's an exceptional service, and that's because Eric Mwate is an exceptional trader. Before we begin, I'd advise you that you can ask questions in your GoToWebinar chat box, amazing opportunity to have your questions answered by one of the best in the business. So don't let the opportunity go away. You can ask anything you'd like to Eric Mwate just by clicking that question into the question box in your GoToWebinar chat box. So without further ado, I introduce to you Eric Mwate. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm doing great, Nathan. Thank you for that great introduction as always. You, you do get me excited, so I appreciate that. And, um, you know, it's always nice to be on the Market Fight platform and to be able to bring interesting topics and probably new ways for investors to consider how they approach the market. So today we're going to be talking about or trying to learn how to love overboard stocks, markets, and ETFs. But before I do that, I know today we had a big down day. The Dow was down, I think, 160 points. NASDAQ was down the most with about 2% drop. So I recognize this is not the best day to be doing this, uh, probably about a week ago, two weeks ago, when the market was at highs, this would have made more sense. But still, we have to understand, because we don't know what the next couple of days and weeks might bring, um, we have to understand what markets do, especially when stocks are screaming to the upside, like they've, they've been doing over the last couple of years. It's very hard, uh, or it is psychologically not easy for traders to manage themselves and manage trades when markets are on fire. So like Nathan said, I'm just like one of you guys out there um, having spent a lot of time in the early days and still continuing because it's an ongoing education. You never say you're done learning how to trade. So it's still ongoing, but most of my work was done in the early 2000s, late 90s, as I've studied thousands and charts and all that. So I'm just your regular guy who has had the opportunity of trading the markets full-time every day over the last 12 years, and I love it. I mean, I wake up very early in the morning, just like uh, most of you guys do, but when I wake up, the first thing I do is turn on the screens and information pours from all over the world. Lots of data to consume, but how do you make sense of all that is pretty much the main question here. So here is me goofing off, and because I spend a lot of time in front of the computer, I spend a lot of my time just unwinding and I spend it outside 
trying to catch the good weather. And most of it, most of the time you find me just kicking the ball around. I play for a soccer team here locally. And that's what I do when I'm not focusing on the markets. Otherwise, when I come back from my practice and from my games, the next thing I do is concentrate on running the Marketfy and my main website. So most of the time is spent, quite frankly, on stocks and looking at charts, look at charts all day. I've done so for months, for years. And this is all I want to do, actually, for the rest of my life. As unbelievable as some of my friends cannot cannot understand why anybody would want to do all that, spend all day, all the time, staring at a screen. Like Nathan saying, I was born in Kenya and self-taught, master's degree, um, launched the Mwada.com website 2000. Uh, from 1999 onwards, been learning and bringing new concepts of technical analysis to the trading community. And, you know, over the years, I've had the opportunity of coaching many individual investors and also people in the institutional side of business, hedge funds, and also just your regular old brokers and, you know, people who trade as professionals. And then since August of this year, mid-August, I was uh, fortunate enough to be brought into the Market Fire platform where I run the MarketFi educational product called the Educational Trader. Okay, so for today, we are going to learn about overbought stocks and why you should love them. Outside of today's action, I still want you to consider what I have to, to talk about here because this could actually change the way you look at stocks, especially stocks that you could be looking to go short or to go long or stocks that are already in your portfolio and they're doing well. And we're gonna talk uh, briefly about how to identify overbought stocks. I do anticipate this to last us about 25 minutes and maybe we'll have about a five minute to 10 minute question and answer period where you guys can ask me anything you'd like to talk about in the market and I'll be very willing and ready to take your questions. First and foremost, a disclaimer. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna to have to kind of brief, briefly go through this because um, it's important. This course is designed and intended strictly for educational purposes only. It does not cons it does not recommend, advocate, or urge the buying, selling, or holding of any financial instruments. The presenter does not assume any responsibility whatsoever for the actions of any person viewing or reading the contents of this course. The presenter may or may not hold positions in the financial instruments discussed. Trading and investing involve high levels of risk. Future results can be dramatically different from the opinions expressed in this course. Past performance does not guarantee future performance. This presentation is provided for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute any type of investment advice. There are no implied guarantees for the accuracy of the information or warranties associated with any representations made in this course and the presenter shall not be held liable for any inaccurate or incomplete information or for any improper or inaccurate use of the information contained in this course. Wow, that was long. But it's important we all know that this is a game where you know we are putting capital to work and everybody needs to understand that it is a risky business and we all have to respect the market for what it is. So this is the performance I've had um, ever since I joined the Market Pie platform going back to about end of June running right now at a run rate of about 23%, and I believe the S&P 500 with today's move could be up about 2% for the year, maybe even lower. So that's the performance when you gauge um, my performance based to the S&P 500. So why are investors so scared of strong stocks? Why? I think some of the reason comes from just the way we naturally approach the our day-to-day -day life and how we buy things and investments in products and you know gadgets and everything. I think we just we come from a mindset of always looking for the bargain, to look for the sale, to try and save ourselves from paying top dollar for any commodity. So this fear of owning strong stocks or traditionally what is called overbought stocks, I think stems from that. We just like to pay lower prices for things and we don't like to be gorged, we don't like to be buying products that are overpriced. Also, there's an aspect, I think there's a natural fear of heights. When stocks move very quickly and you can see that on the charts that they're extended, 
it's just a natural fear of heights and you don't want to be the guy who comes in and buys at the high only to see yourself drop and be part of a big sell-off like today. Another fear we have is just the fear of trading in a very volatile market like a roller coaster and you don't want to be the one who comes in there buying an extended stock that is obviously to your eyes shown potential by moving and so now you don't want to be upside down. So this roller coaster in the market up and down does make us very cautious to go into situations where we think or we can see a stock that was trading previously at lower prices is now over the last couple of days, last couple of months, trending much, much higher than where it was trading before. So we have that natural fear of going into situations where volatility and extended stocks don't really invite us to come in and participate in such moves. And also there's also, also this fear of the unknown. So when you see a stock that has already traded and you're trading blind like we always do in the market, the last thing you want to do is you know, it's a rainy day, you can't see where you're going, and somebody will be telling you that a stock that has already performed well is going to continue moving higher. It's a little bit, you know, throws a red flag in, a red flag in your mind because you're thinking, wait a minute, I, sh I should have bought the stock at a lower price, not today. And so you go finding the next great stock that is a bargain, that is, or maybe buy a stock like JC Payne, which is at multi year lows, thinking that it's going to be the next great move. So, you know, over the years, it's kind of interesting, and I hear this a lot, that people always tell me, Eric, if, I, if you bought the stocks that I sold, you'd make money. And if you just did the opposite of what I did. In other words, most people believe whenever they buy a stock, for some odd reason, it goes down. You know what I mean? We always have that. I always hear people telling me, for some reason, if I could just do the opposite of what I do, I could make money. And so we have this fear of the market always slapping us in the face. And the last thing we want to do is lose money on a stock that has already moved. So we have that fear. Okay, so this is what I'm going to tell you guys. There's so many inst there are so many institutions that are su successful and so many successful hedge funds and individual investors that have made a career out of buying what is called overbought stocks. That's all they do. In fact, their mantra and their policy is to buy high and sell higher. Personally, I have spent the last 10 years plus concentrating only on nosebleed or overboard stocks, stocks that generally nobody would want to touch. The fact that I've spent the last 10 years doing this, you know, makes you understand that there is possibility of moves to be seen in stocks, especially when you know what you're looking for. So why would anybody um, spend their time looking for stocks that are overbought? That's the main question here. So first and foremost, the fact of life is that overbought stocks is where stocks really explode. If you look at a chart and you see a stock that has been trending sideways for a while and then suddenly just blasts out of a range. If you notice, your indicators are going to be screaming traditionally overbought. And actually, overbought is the only time stocks explode. Now, I know this is very strange for people to accept, but if you are looking for stocks that gain the most in the shortest amount of time, then you have to concentrate on what is traditionally quote-unquote called overbought. Okay, so I want to deliver my promise as to the one reason why you should love overbought, overbought stocks. Overbought is the only time that stocks accelerate their ascent. Overbought is also your only chance to own high-flying Hall of Fame stocks. The notion of overbought is also grossly misunderstood. So by definition, what people call overbought is completely wrong and misunderstood. Almost all, if not all, technical analysis resources, and you can just go and look at Wikipedia, um, Investopedia, all these resources, or take, take a look at any textbook you might have on technical analysis, 
and you're going to realize very quickly that most of them define overbought as when a stock's RSI moves above 70. All of them do that. And so when somebody tells you something is overbought, they're telling you it's overpriced. And psychologically, this throws a wrench in your thinking. Why would you buy something that is overbought? Why would you even consider a stock that is overpriced? See, that psychological barrier is the reason why we don't look at stocks that are strong in their performance month to month. Okay, so what Wall Street is telling you by that definition is that you should sell greatness. And I think that is wrong. Let's take a look at some life, real life examples here. And I'm going to use the world of sports to bring this home. You know, the New England Patriots won their first Super Bowl in 2000 and won. So my question to you, were they overbought at the time? Right? I mean, they just did something they had not done in their franchise history. And so the, Wall Street wants you to believe that, given the definition, that they were overbought. But even given that win in 2001, the same team would go on to win three, two other championships almost back to back in a span of three, four years. So in 2001, what the team was telling you is that they were great, that they should be taken seriously and they were strong contenders even for years down the road. And that is why I'm saying investors should not be scared of great stocks because great stocks are showing you their potential. Let's take a look at Michael Jordan. 1982, this game-winning shot won the, 2000, the 1982 NCAA championship. And one could say, well, Michael Jordan was overhyped, maybe. Was he overbought in 1982? Definitely, we know he wasn't overbought. So you should not be scared of strong stocks, strong players in any field, like particular in sports, or also same happens to be true when it comes to the stock market. So what I'm saying is don't sell or short greatness. Buy greatness instead. Nine years later, Michael J Jordan won his first NBA championship. The question I ask for you guys is, was he overbought in, two, in 1991? I don't think so. What he was showing you was how great of a player he was. And he should be part of anybody's team. So don't sell or short greatness. What I'm trying to show you is to fall in love with greatness and to buy greatness instead. So down the road, after winning college championship in 82 and his first NBA championship in 91, Michael Jordan would go on to rack on five more, winning six NBA championships altogether. He was a great at the beginning and he stayed great for many years down the road. So what I'm trying to show you here is that you should not be scared of great stocks because great stocks are going to be the ones that make a difference in your portfolio if you time them right. Let's take a look at a recent example here. Of course, some people love him, some people hate him, but that's not the point. point is, after winning his first NBA championship in 2012, was LeBron James overbought? Would you so what the Miami Heat supposed to sell him? Oh, yeah, he's done. He's never going to win another championship. Or do you believe in him even more? This is a question you should ask yourself. If you own a stock that is taking off, should you just sell it because it's over what? Or is the stock showing you that you are right by buying it in the first place? And now you should sit around and see whether it has more to offer. So after winning the first championship in the NBA in 2012, LeBron and the Heat showed that they were great. So don't sell or short greatness, which is usually what investors are trying to do. I say buy greatness instead. So, of course, LeBron was not overbought. He was just showing you how much potential he had in him as a player and as a team. That's why, even though it wasn't easy, they would still come back and win the following year when they're back-to-back NBA championship. So, again, I think one of the missing pieces in investors' mindset when it comes to trading is the fact that they run away from strong stocks thinking that they, are, they cannot move anymore. Like Michael Jordan cannot win his fourth ring, fifth ring. Yes, having done one ring, 
another ring is very possible. Okay, so I think the biggest misconception when it comes to trading is the fact that this word called overbought, you hear it everywhere in the financial media, you hear it among traders that something is overbought, really throws a curveball in our thinking. Overbought, in other words, stands for overpriced. I think what we should understand here is that when stocks move their RSI above that 70 threshold, what they're showing you is how much love this, the street is with the stock or how much the stock is in demand or how great the stock is. The stock is showing you its strength. The stock is showing you how much speed it has accumulated or its level of bullishness. And also it's a sign of peak performance. Very important, peak performance. So it's not overboard. Don't use that word or overpriced. It's a stock showing you its potential and how much it could deliver for you down the road. So why don't we go and take a look at some examples some charts of stocks that most of them I had the you know opportunity of introducing to subscribers. Let's begin with Visa. Now Visa, as you can see here, it was um, let's call it about beginning of 2012. The stock moved its RSI above 50 on the monthly chart or above 70 on the monthly chart for the first time. So I issued an alert here: with the stock moving up above 101. So why would anybody want to buy a stock that is overbought? Why? Because I understood at the time that this stock was showing potential and it's been a grind, but over time, the stock has more than doubled over the last, uh, let's call it about close to two years. You know, it's been a while, but it's done well. Okay. Why? Because I recognized the, the power in the stock when the RSI moved above this threshold of 70. The stock was showing how much love the street had for the stock. That's why I'm saying we should love stocks that are showing us strength and not consider selling or shorting them. Let's take a look at another example here, C-O-N-N. -N. On a monthly chart, I issued a buy alert here, beginning of uh, about October of 2012. Stock was trading at $23. Since then, even though it was at the highest RSI level, most people would say it was overbought, but because I understand momentum, buying it here just meant that I was buying it when the stock was at its greatest performance. Peak performance, peak acceleration, everything was primed to move. And since then, the stock has moved from about 23 and has hit as high or close to $70. Why? Very simple principle. I didn't look at the fundamentals, did not consider the story in the stock, don't care. All I want to know is how strong is the stock? And using that very simple principle, I fell in love with it and introduced the stock right here to subscribers. Let's take a look at another one here. And everybody's very aware of that Facebook was down today. Let's forget about all that for now and consider why it has done well over the last couple of weeks. Ever since July, you see that on the weekly chart, Facebook's RSI moved above 70. Traditionally where people and the textbooks want you to get out of stocks, but I'm saying fall in love with the stock when it does something like this because the stock is just confirming to you how powerful it is. So Facebook, after moving above 70 here, mid-July, that was at a price of about, let's call it you know, $34 or so, the stock would go on to move as high as $50. Now, I, I issued an alert, a buy alert for Facebook at 39.19 when it moved above that uh, level. Even though you can see here the RSI in, September, in August and September was making all-time highs. So, if you just knew that this was a strong stock showing you its strength, you would have considered Facebook a buy during this magnificent ride. Despite today's move, the stock has still done well over the last couple of months. Why? Because it's demonstrated how great it is. Now let's change gears here and I want to talk about, just talk about for one minute, about the opposite of overbought, which is what people call um, oversold. Now that's another word that is misunderstood. Take a look at the natural gas chart. When you look at the O9, when this RSI moves below 30 here, most people would consider 
eight times to buy the stock. That was at a price of $184. But I'm telling you, you have to understand the RSI. This was telling you that the stock was not loved by the street. Do not fall in love with stocks that are making new lows on their RSI. Like you can see in this particular example, most people would be fishing in this, you know, over the last couple of years trying to buy this instrument. But what I'm trying to teach you is that this is just a sign of how terrible the story is. Okay? And so you either can see that you can use the same principle when you are shopping for stocks that have been sold. The best time to buy a stock in this particular example is probably here in the um, beginning of 2013 right here when it moves its RSI above $30, above 30 on the month. So here in 09, stock is terrible. Don't even look at it. Most people want to shop around here because the textbooks tell you that this is oversold. No, it's not oversold. That's the wrong way to look at it. Let's take a look at two more examples here. Tesla was down today, but let's go back to the great action since early this year in April, the stock became overbought at about $39. That's when the RSI moved above 70. Since then, stock has moved from an overbought, quote unquote, and I'm telling you this is when the street shows you how much love it has for stock. So we should also learn to love stocks that are doing the same thing. From $30 all the way to one ninety. And as, the, as we began the video here, I mean the webinar, we talked about one of the best performing stocks. It's Tesla. Why? Look at how beautiful this RSI looks like. When I see a, a stock doing this, I know this is where I should be looking for entry points, not exit points. Let's take a look at one more, PCYC. Now, this stock has had a magnificent run. Now, even though I issued a buy alert, at 66.92 beginning of this year, 2013. Look at how oversold, or how overbought. I don't want to use that word, but I'm just trying to use a word that is wrong. Clearly, this is not correct. How can something be overbought and move from $66 when I issued that buy alert all the way to $140 in a couple of months? So this is clearly telling you that the definition that we traditionally have for the RSI being overbought is wrong. In fact, if you go back to 2011, middle of 2011, the stock became overbought at a price of under $10, about $7, $8. And since then, it's moved from $7 or $8 all the way to 140 So if you are watching this stock always thinking it was too expensive, you completely did not understand that the stock was showing you its power. So this is a perfect example of why you should fall in love with overbought markets, ETFs, and stocks. Okay, so the question here is, I trust that I've spent a couple of minutes, and um, I know it seems a little bit condensed, but my question is, have I delivered at least a seed in your mind for you guys to consider at the very least, whenever you see a stock that has been doing well, look traditionally overbought, could you at the very least consider it potentially not done? So my question to you guys is, would you consider now that you've at least you know, given me a few minutes to discuss this concept, can you guys consider buying a stock that is overbought? Um, let me get a few yeses so I can know that at least this concept, this idea that a stock is never going to move again is wrong. So let me, let me, why don't you guys type in and so we can see how many of you believe that this concept could be looked at differently and yes, that there is possibility of reviewing how we approach such situations. Okay, I see a couple of yeses. That's good. Good. Okay, good. All right, so I've, I've been using this idea, this concept, to, be tr to trade in my portfolio on MarketFi. And as you can see, at least right now, doing very well compared to the general market. And this concept and many other concepts, whenever you put them together, and this is what I do on the newsletter here, is to try and help all of us rethink the way we approach markets 
and also what ideas we should be looking at if we are looking for those explosive movers. And let's face it, all of us are looking for explosive situations so we can at least get the best or the biggest bang for our back. So I'm going to bring in Nathan here. I trust that at least you've had a couple of minutes to hear what I have to say. If I have delivered on the promise, which was to help you guys reconsider what is traditionally considered overboard, then I trust that you can stay and probably you got, might, might have some questions at the very end. Or also, I would like you to hear Nathan, as Nathan has a special offer that is going to go out to those who are in this webinar for today. So Nathan, I'm going to let you come in here and um, take it from here for a minute, and then I'll go ahead and take uh, any questions that might be out there. 100%. Thank you, Eric. First of all, confirm that you can hear me? Yes, I hear you. All right. Good, good. So, could you do me a favor, actually, Eric, and go back to the previous slide? Yes. I, I want to point out the enormity of what we're seeing here in front of us, where it's really the educational, uh, the educational trainer portfolio has only, has only been around over, over the past summer. And if you compare the performance of what the S&P 500 did versus what Eric Watkins trading did, it's just night and day. It's a different conversation. It's a different ballpark. Look at that gap in the performance and imagine to yourself what that gap in performance means to you. If that were the gap between your trading and the gap between the trading that members of Eric Watkins' educational portfolio enjoy. Imagine what that difference in gains could mean for you between about 3 or 4% the 23 or 24 percent. And we're only talking a matter of a couple months. That's, I think, another three months here that we're looking at right now. That is an amazing difference, and that has real implications for, for members' lives. For those who chose to trade alongside Eric Mouante, that means everything from being able to improve their income over that time period. That means everything from being able to take a nicer vacation, from having more comfort as far as paying the mortgage, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe if they, some, somebody wants to retire, getting them even closer to that retirement goal than they'd ever possibly dreamed of. And that's only over a matter of three months. You know, we, we've been watching Eric Montes trading for years now. And, um, he, he was introduced on MarketFi just a few months ago. And the reason we brought him in, like I said, is because he is an exceptional second to none trader. So I definitely challenge everyone to look at that chart and think to yourself, what difference could that difference on the screen makes to my life if, if it was a difference between my trading and Eric's trading for, for those who shoot trade alongside Eric. So if we could see the, ne the next slide, Eric. Yes. Got it. So here's what we put together. And it's, it's an offer that we have actually never offered for, for the educational trader before because it's just such a good deal. We're only giving it away for 24 hours because it is such a good deal. And that is Four dollars for your first 14 days of the educational trader. I know I've, I've seen some people are writing and asking, "What is the educational trader?" Well, it is access to Eric Mwate's real-time trade alerts, where arriving in your email the moment that Eric places a trade, or arriving in your cell phone's text message box the moment that, that Eric places a trade, will be an alert to that trade plus a quick rationale of the trade, and of course Eric will follow up with. Insights. He does a daily video. It's all amazing stuff. And ultimately, what it comes down to is those trade picks that no longer in the portfolio just so far exceed what, what the major indices do that the, the members enjoy a level of, of prosperity in their trading and lucrative trading um, that it's simply you can't find anywhere else. So it involves it involves those real time trade alerts. It involves insights on stocks that are set to explode because that is our specialty: stocks that are momentum stocks have a momentum behind them and are ready to take off. It involves a daily video update on the markets. That's Eric's insights, Eric's commentary, his exclusive research and analysis. And of course, if for any reason you're unsatisfied, we are so confident, you don't see this often, but with MarketFi, we are so confident that you will enjoy and benefit from the, your subscription to the Educational Trader and from that, that trial subscription where you can get for your first 14 days for only $4. That should you be unsatisfied for any reason whatsoever, We'll give you your money back. All you have to do is give MarketFi a call at 1-877-440-9664, and we will give your money back. And again, the reason we offer that is because we're so confident, and we've seen a track record of, of customers who, who join and become members of the Educational Trader 
and to become members for life because they simply can't live without it. And it just takes their trading to the next level, takes their portfolios to the next level, and that's what it can do to you. Take your portfolio to the next level. So I thought, Eric, that we would get to some questions here. Okay. Um, it, all, all moderates. Okay, so I see we have some questions asking about how to sign up. Um, so again, you only have 24 hours to sign up with this special deal. Otherwise, the, the price goes up to $69. So you definitely want to make sure you get in on that um, that $4 deal before it goes up in 24 hours. And what I did, the easiest way to sign up is I dropped the link in your GoToWebinar chat box where you can access it there. As I speak, you can see that link, and I'll drop it again. Make sure you check that link and grab it before it's gone because it's only lasting 24 hours. All right, Th there it is, and then we will get to the questions. So yep. So the first question is, how can I sign up? Just click on that link, the coupon code is already in there, and you can sign up at the page in your GoToWebinar chat box. Next question comes in from James. James asks, is it better to buy on a pullback? What do you say, Eric? You know, Yes and no, because let's say, let's take today's action. We have a down market. So do you want to buy today? I would say no, because the pullback has to at least digest itself. So let's say if you want to buy on a pullback, you're better off waiting for the stock to find its own flow. Let other traders come in and support the stock. Then maybe on a couple of days, after a couple of days, or maybe showing more potential for a stock to start moving higher, then you can buy it. That's just a generic answer. So, I mean, there are lots of factors, but I would not be buying on a down day or a, or a couple of down days until the market shows me at least a 1% gain. At least a 1% gain on the major averages to show me that maybe now there's interest for people coming back into the market. Otherwise, you don't know how long the markets could be down. So, yes and no. I would wait for confirmation that a stock or a market has stopped going down before I, I, I become interested myself. Thanks, Eric. Okay. The, the, James asked another question. That was, do you believe in buying on a down day like today? You know, no. I would rather buy the market instead of buying it today. Let's just give an example. If the market was up, 1% tomorrow, then I would start looking around for evidence that the market is about to bounce. But until I see that 1% gain, I'm, I'm always looking, you know, to wonder whether how much downside is left in a market. So I would not be buying on the down day itself. I'm going to wait for the market to find its own floor, even if it's overnight, before I can consider the long side again. Yep. Okay. Next question comes in from from Dennis. Dennis asks, "How do I know if a stock is actually at its peak and about to drop?" Wow, that's that's a tough one. Well, Dennis, I, I tell you what, the the best method of at least knowing that a stock that you own is just about to crack is if you have negative divergence, and I don't, I'm not sure that you understand that. But if the stock is moving higher, and yet the technicals are not following through. Maybe that's a, if you go take a look at Facebook's hourly chart right now, today was down about 6.5% over the, and I talked about this over the last weekend or so. The fact that the stock was making higher highs, but the technicals were not following through was a sign that of weakening and that more than likely, more than likely, you would see lower prices. And to me, today's drop was not a surprise. So to answer your question, of course, there are many factors. Market is a factor, the sector is a factor, and also the, the stock itself, the internals of the stock, are also something you have to consider. Otherwise, if a stock is moving higher for you and you haven't seen the technicals start to fade out, then you need to stay in the stock as, as long as you can. Okay, and then we have a question from Henry, and Henry asked, right now, Eric, what is your number one top favorite pick? And actually, before I, before I let you answer that one, Eric, I have to cut, cut you off and um, 
and, and censor that question because it, it wouldn't be fair to those of you who are signing up for the educational trainer, and I see that a number of you are signing up, so welcome. It, it wouldn't be fair to answer that question from, from Henry because quite simply that, that those picks are what you get as a benefit of joining the educational trainer. But again, for only $4, for the price of probably the pair of socks on my feet, you can get access to Eric Milwaukee's exclusive real-time trade alerts and insights on stocks that are set to explode. Again, that is why you saw in that previous slide where the, the, the gap between what the S&P 500 is doing and what Eric Milwaukee's educational portfolio is doing is so big because Eric Milwaukee's portfolio is outperforming it by an amazing amount, by about 20%, 20% not outperforming it by 20%, but the number of the percentage performance is 20% higher. That That's an amazing thing, quite simply because Eric Monty looks at all the stocks in the stock market and finds those and only those which are primed to explode. And of course, as, as an ordinary investor without Eric's skills, you just can't necessarily do that. But it goes beyond that, Henry. You know, Henry, I speak to traders and investors all the time. It's one of the best parts of my job is speaking to traders and investors. And I, I always ask one question, which is, what are you trading for? And there's a thread, a very consistent thread that goes through all the answers to that question. So. Whether people answer, I'm, I'm trading so that I can quit my dead-end job and become a full-time trader and live a life of independence. Some people say, I'm trading so that I can retire sooner. Some people say, I'm trading so that I can put my kids through college. Some people say, I'm trading so that I can finally get ahead of paying off my bills and my mortgage. Whatever your answer is, there's always an answer that boils down to, and that common thread is achieving some kind of goal. And you know what? When it comes to achieving goals, there's one, no, there's nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing more important than being proactive and taking charge of the situation and being resourceful about achieving your goal. Otherwise, they will never be achieved. And everybody wants to be resourceful towards achieving their goal, but this is for you, Henry, this is for everyone in the audience. If you want to be resourceful, take advantage of those resources. Take advantage of those resources which are at your disposal. And this sitting right in front of your nose, this offer from Eric Malaste to join the educational trader for only $4 for your first 14 days. To get those alerts, which can get you a portfolio that has a consistent track record of outperforming your S&P 500, that is a promise that you simply can't get, and it's anywhere else. It's a promise that you can get with Eric Mwate. That 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 promise that we, as we've seen with the amazing track record, and we um, we certainly it's, it's promising for, for future results as well. That folks, my challenge to you is be resourceful enough take advantage of the resources at your disposal and sitting right in front of you on your computer screen is an amazing resource. So de definitely take advantage of that offer. It's in your GoToWebinar chat box. And we'll, we'll continue with the question. Sorry I got a little bit carried away there, Eric, but when, That's I, okay. really, when I feel so deeply about something and I'm so passionate about it, like I've seen so many of these customers with the educational trader, I kind of uh, tend to carry on. Um, That's so all right. Question, Appreciate question that. Question from Richard: Is your portfolio primarily based on overbought stocks, or that and, and other factors? Well, of course, it's based on that and other factors. Of course, definitely, I would love to own explosive stocks, so I do consider that. But other factors do come into play. For example, if the market is going to go down over the next couple of months, we have to consider the short side of things, and maybe you're not going to find explosive stocks. Actually, you're not going to find as many explosive stocks. What you're going to find is probably ultra-short ETF. So lots of factors. Markets keep you know, forcing us to change our outlook. So yes, it's one of the major things I look for and also not the only factor. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Luke asked, do you look at stocks from a more technical or fundamental perspective? Oh, that's easy. Uh, it's all purely technical. Right. Yeah. I could, could throw you a, uh, a softball there. <laughs> well, this, this one's a little bit more substantial from Scott. Okay. How does your trading style adapt to macro trends like QE or debt debates? It's a tongue twister, debt debates. Um, you know, to be very honest, I think we all kind of held at ransom by the market. So, yes, we have to. You know, if, if you come into a situation expecting stocks to go high and the market is telling you you are wrong, then you have to re-evaluate. So the charts will change. And I, as I always say, you know, 
you can't be stuck on one idea. If the market is forcing you to reconsider any idea you had, you have to reconsider that. So yes, um, fundamental picture, the story of the, of the day, the news of the day, expectations of the day, earnings, geopolitical events, uh, politics, all these things factor into stocks. Ultimately, the prices, which are the, what constitutes the stock chart, will reflect the underlying sentiment and probably if, if you are lucky, you, you know, it's tough, but if you can figure out what the market is going to do over time, then the idea is to try and play the trend to your advantage. But yes, of course, prices will fluctuate as factors, fundamental factors change minute to minute, day to day, month to month. So you always have to keep adjusting our outlook and how we are positioned. Thank you, Eric. And I, I know we said that we would keep this to about 30, 35 or 40 minutes, but we had a lot of great questions coming, so sure. I just wanted to uh, to extend it with your permission. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. So then we have, um, I'll, I'll ask one last question, and there's one more thing that I wanted to, uh, to, to show the audience. We'll ask this question first, and that is from Kay. What is your RSI or stock Otis criteria for entry? Come again. What is, I'm, not, I'm not sure what that second one is, but what is your RSI criteria for entry? Oh, okay. Um, to be honest, I use about 69. 69 would be where the RSI, I think that's what he's talking about, is at what point is a stock considered overbought or at least in that category where people would be avoiding it or trying to go short. Is about 69, 70 is what most charts will have, uh, but I use 69 as the line for me to consider stock as showing its power. Thanks. And then we have James asking about um, some of how you handle risk. What stop losses do you espouse? Or can you tell us a little bit more about how you use stop losses in your trading? Yes, yeah, stop losses would come in, in multiple ways. A, there's a market. There's either you can either use the price to you know to set a a set price and say, okay, if the stock goes below this level, I'm gonna get out. And most traders would use about five to eight percent, or you can also use the charts to tell you when an idea that you have is wrong. So let's say if a, you know stocks are going to be volatile, um, you have to reconsider whether you can take uh, a deeper loss. If you if you look at the charts and you see that short term blip with the volatility in the market, that it's just short term that whatever you're seeing could change. So it's a combination of many factors. I would say the most if you're really going to be ideal, the ideal way to do it is to set a stop and forget it. If you want to be not over trading, then you might have some leeway and consider using the charts also on when to get out of bad trades. Thanks, Matt. That's a really informative answer. Thank you, Eric. So what I, what I wanted to read to everyone was actually a, a review from a real customer. So just so you know, every, any review that you read on marketify.com is from a real customer. The only people who are actually allowed to write reviews are people who have had sign, sign up. So this is a member of the educational trader community. His name is Ron. He wrote a five-star review. All the Eric's reviews are actually five-star reviews. Um, and here's something that Ron wrote. I have been slowly converting my positions to match Eric's portfolio. With the exception of two positions which, which have been down since I signed up, I am glad to report the following. My two Scott Trade accounts that total about 120000 have earned enough these past two weeks to pay the market by annual fees about seven times, about nine times that I have not entered these two additional positions. I researched the five long positions that I have sold while making this transition, and had I not joined MarketFi, I have calculated that my accounts would be down about $2,300. While I am discussing the bottom line, I'd like to mention a stat that every beginning or experienced investor should resist. 93% of all new investors who enter the stock market with a newly acquired principal of capital, say inheritance or savings they have, lose everything in six months or less. These re results were derived from studies in Europe, Asia, and the U.S. Four years, and he, he goes on. But I, I want to point out, again, just to reiterate, his, his trades, Vaughn's trades in, the, in the, his first two weeks of signing up for the educational trader, he said, were enough to pay the market by annual fee about seven times over. Seven times over. So that is the kind of return on investment that Ron got. That's the kind of return on investment that all members of the educational trader have been able to enjoy, and that 
the, the, the track record is certainly promising that you, as a new member of the educational trader, for those of you who have signed up, for those of you who are considering sign up, can expect to enjoy. Um, so again, we'll close with that. But hey, Nathan. Yep. Do you have to, let, me, let me take two more. I see two more, and I'd like to answer those two more, if you don't mind. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. All right, if you've hey. Got, um, if you've yeah, got because time, we appreciate that. Sure, the, sure. Your generosity um, in doing it. I see one coming here, uh, uh, Jim asked, uh, do you think skill at trading is different from skill at analysis? That's a good question and I would like to address that. You know, I honestly think that the skill at trading and the skill at analysis, and I know it's kind of confusing, but I know you understand what I mean is, I think they're two separate things. It's just like, um, there's so many great coaches they, and they coach great players, like Michael Jordan had a coach, Kobe Bryant has a coach. But they cannot make the plays. So I think ultimately, I would say I am personally a better analyst than I am a trader. But of course, the two have to be together for, for you to be able to trade a portfolio. So at the end of the day, to answer that question, if I was, if I was to answer it the best I can, I would say if I was to, have, if I was to do one without the other, if I, I was only to do analysis without any... Um, skin in the game, then of course I would be a better analyst because I'm not tied to the performance of a, of a call. But because we are traders and we have all this mental aspect, market volatility that always skews our thinking, so I would say it's easier to make the calls on the analysis side and it's harder to leave day to day on the, on the trades because the trades have real life implications. So to answer your question, I think most people are better analysts than they are traders. And I'll answer one more. I think um, somebody's asking, Singh is asking, do you use slow or fast uh, stochastics for overboard criteria? Um, I don't use I don't use that indicator at all. I just use the RSI, but I know most people do. So it really, it's whatever you consider overbought. I'm just saying that maybe that term overbought is misused by Wall Street. So I don't use that indicator, either the fast one or the slow one, but I just use the RSI uh, predominantly. And it's, what, it's whatever you call overbought, maybe you should consider the fact that stock is just showing you its power and not showing you that it's done or that it is overpriced. So I'll end with that, Nathan. If you can close, that would be great. That's You there? I'm um, here. Thank you, Eric. Okay. So I just want to close by, first of all, just finally just praising the portfolio performance. Since you, since you started, it's gained 23.4%, and that's only over the course of the summer. The average trade gain has been 26%, so we're not talking a ton of trades here. We're just talking about really, really good trades. Um, we've, we've made 45 trades over the, since, since the summer started, and you started the portfolio. And here's the real, the real important statistic, 91% win percentage on these trades. And that's just an amazing thing, it's especially when you, when you take into, a, into consideration that you, any any trader needs to, to hedge bets. Um, so not not every trade is going to turn out to be a, uh, a winner. So that ninety one percent win percentage is just a phenomenal number, and that's the number that members of the educational trader have been able to enjoy in their own trading. And that's a, the kind of number that you could be enjoying enjoying if you sign up for the educational trader. There's no time easier than now to sign up. That link is in your GoToWebinar chat box. That link will not be there um, when, when the webinar is finished, so make sure to sign up for that uh, for that subscription before we close the webinar. And we will be sending out a recording of this webinar in, in an email later. If you have any further questions for Eric Vellante, you can certainly be sure to send him those questions as a reply to the email. Actually, not a reply. You'll see there's a little message read button um, that will be in the top right corner of the email with the recording from Eric. So make sure to, pick, to look out for that. And beyond that, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you so much, Eric, for presenting this session. You know, it's funny, I, I've said this to you before because your presentations uh -huh. are just always so damn good. But if this were a, a live room, if this were an auditorium, then we would all be giving you a standing ovation. <laughs> I love shucks, that. Shucks, it's not. This is a, a virtual room. We'll, we'll have to do with the, uh, the imagination. But I'm sure everyone is uh, back home giving a, uh, a big thank you or a big clap out on the back to you, Eric, for sharing your time 
We are so grateful to, to have you on here. We're so grateful to have you on Markify because you are one of the best in this business. Thank you, Eric. Again, everyone, I encourage you, when we send out that recording, send Eric your questions. And again, you only have 24 hours to sign up. I'm going to keep this room open for just a few moments so that you can click on the link before it goes away. But that link will go away when we close the webinar room. Um, and after that, you'll have to go on the marketify.com and then use coupon code EXPLO EXPLOSIVE to be educational trader to get your first 14 days for only $4. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Eric. And Thank you. Thank you for the presentation.